that you, uh, Congressman, I guess agree with uh, the new leader of the Progressive Caucus, uh, Congresswoman Jayapal, uh, that this bill is on track for passage tonight? Uh, absolutely. And, you know, uh, I think when people were so concerned about whether we were voting on a Monday or a Wednesday or the next Wednesday, what day we were going to get the bills done, we've said all along, uh, it, what mattered really is what's in the bills. And right now we have got so much of what the president wanted to get done in his Build Back Better agenda between this bill and the infrastructure bill. And uh, when we uh, finally get this through the Senate, uh, we're going to have really delivered for the American people in a very serious, substantial way. You heard Hakeem Jeffries talk about all the savings that will be there for the American people in addition to the tax cut through the child tax cut that's in there, uh, as well as the creation of millions of jobs, many of which tackle climate change. And, and again, it's all paid for. So uh, we're very happy that this is being sent to the Senate. We expect that they'll send it back to us really soon. And that's when we can really talk about how much uh, the American people are going to benefit from this bill. So the, the scoring uh, controversy, it, it's, it's a very rare thing for the CBO and the Joint Tax Committee uh, to have a tax provision, and the IRS enforcement provision is essentially a tax provision, to have something like that that they can't figure out how to score. And basically what they're saying is our techniques that we have used in the past do not apply uh, to this kind of enforcement change. And so the Treasury, uh, consulting former IRS commissioners and other uh, IRS, IRS enforcement professionals, they've come up with their estimate of what it will be. They're saying it could be $400 billion, it could be $500 billion in additional revenue. And that's, what, that's the number, that's the money that balances this bill. And it is, for technical purposes, being balanced outside of the official scoring process. And I take it that that has been considered good enough by the members, the, the more moderate members who were waiting for this official score. I think what they were looking for is just making sure that it's consistent with the other analyses that are out there, and it has been. Um, so I think they're convinced, and they're right to be convinced, that uh, this bill will be paid for, that only people who make more than 400000 and corporations that often have found ways not to pay their fair share, uh, they're the ones who are going to be paying for this bill for a change. It's it completely different than what happened, uh, don't forget, in the Trump era when they passed a tax cut where 86% of the money went to the top 1%. They completely didn't pay for a dime of it. Uh, we're doing just the opposite. Uh, this is a bill that will be paid for, won't add to the deficit, and will save American families quite a bit of money. Yeah, it was... a. Uh... The, the joint tax report on this that I was looking at tonight, which is incorporated in the CBO score, is unlike any I've, I've seen because I was turning pages and pages of it, and all of the provisions, the tax provisions, were losing money uh, from the Treasury because they are things like tax credits for environmental uh, issues like the tax credits that support the purchase of electric vehicles, for example. And there's a tremendous amount of outflow from the Treasury in support of the environmental agenda through tax credits. And then I came to the corporate provisions and bang, the numbers started to pop. The, the giant revenue uh, that's coming in through the corporate taxation and then the taxation on the very high income earners. You know, I've been a small business owner for 34 years, and, and so many people like myself back in Wisconsin and across the country pay our taxes on a regular basis. And these big corporations have found ways, whether it's hiding money overseas or, or having you know, very high-paid uh, lawyers and accountants, they figure out how to scam the system. This bill goes after that, has a minimum tax that they have to pay, and it's finally bringing that tax fairness. So as a small business owner, I especially appreciate this because it adds to my competitiveness as a small business, uh, and also it's, it's showing that no one can get away with uh, not paying their fair share like all of my constituents do. So it's one of the stronger provisions in, in the bill is how we actually pay for it. Congressman Mark Pocan, thank you very much for joining us. I'm sorry that we took you away uh, from listening to Kevin McCarthy's speech. Uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, I think I'm going to watch it rerun a few times tonight <laughs> in order to get to sleep, so it won't be a problem. Thank you. Thank you very much, Congressman. Appreciate it.